A few seconds from now, we will be exploring the various possibilities and secrets behind SpaceX's perfect and phenomenal planned landing system, as Elon Musk and SpaceX finally reveal its Starship and super heavy landing tricks. So keep watching as we unveil this astonishing news and update. Elon Musk has finally unveiled how exactly the SpaceX Mechazilla chopstick will catch the massive and elegant Starship super heavy rocket after almost a whole year of popularity. The question on everyone's mind should be, what's SpaceX's new landing trick for its Starships and Super Heavy? The complex development of SpaceX's giant Mechazilla chopsticks is attracting major attention from SpaceX and Musk recently last month. Elon Musk shared a video of the first test of Mechazilla. He unveiled the Starship's Super Heavy new landing trick through SpaceX chopsticks. Musk also shared a video showing the Starship launch tower and how it will catch the Super Heavy by utilizing massive water balloons that have the same capacity and weight as a Super Heavy booster for the test. After that, he went further to show a render of how the launch tower would catch and grab the massive Super Heavy rocket. Just like what you're seeing, he showed a video simulation of a set of graphs that indicate body simulation and altitude parameters as Super Heavy falls vertically downwards towards the Mechazilla chopsticks. What are these famous chopstick arms? The chopstick arms are also looking like a giant robotic claw, are designed efficiently to catch the rocket load points just below the grid fins. Shock absorption is built into the chopstick arms. Musk recently commented, we can see the catcher arms closing on the booster when landing. To catch the booster from the tube ends during the landing, and if something goes wrong, then the grid fins are ready to take the hit. He continued, and of course, we hope not. We hope that everything goes according to plans. Frankly speaking, this isn't the first time we have seen the SpaceX chopsticks arm in action. It is significant to note that Mechazilla doesn't move at all, except for its chopstick arms, which ascend and descend. The super heavy booster does most of the work by descending perfectly to the point where it can be caught by the chopsticks arms. What optional methods is SpaceX developing to apply to catching and reusing starships and super heavies? Funny enough, when analyzing the landing and catching of the Super Heavy, it appears to be the booster landing on the Mechazilla arms, rather than the chopstick arms catching the booster. If you observe closely at the 1 km altitude of the Super Heavy booster, you'll notice a bluish or reddish light rumbling beneath the booster. Those are the ignitions of the 9 rotating Raptor engines, powering the booster massively to slow it down as it descends towards the Mechazilla. If you look closely, you can see how the booster's acceleration drops, after which, at some point, all six rotating Raptor engines will be immediately shut off, leaving three rotating Raptor engines to control the booster's alignment with the chopstick arms. This is a possibility because, with almost an empty booster, the nine Raptor engines can lift the booster into the sky, meaning at about one kilometer, the nine rotating Raptor engines would be initiated to slow down the booster when descending at a high speed. Then at 700 meters, only three rotating Raptor engines would be functional for the booster to gain a little bit of speed. Isn't this so amazing? What's the development status of SpaceX Mechazilla and Starship? Stick around as we explore more amazing updates. With no further delay, let us realistically explore the progress at which the orbital starbase launch tower Mechazilla has been developed so far. With SpaceX's previous engagement of the chopsticks arm, in various tests and buildup, we can applaud SpaceX for getting a step closer to completing this massive Starship project. As a result, we should expect to see a fully stacked Starship and a super heavy booster ready for launch on the orbital launch pad sooner rather than later. We also hope that the successful completion of the chopsticks will allow Booster 4 and possibly Booster 7 to be carried to the orbital launch pad. We can also compare the veteran Rocket Falcon 9 booster to the Super Heavy booster. We all know that the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket is one of the most amazing landing experiences and video records. An example of a video during the landing of a Falcon 9 booster last year on October 8th is shown below. If you observe closely, you'll see a long and undisturbed recording of the booster making its way from the lower Earth orbit down towards Kennedy Space Center. You can see the grid fin moving sideways both in the left and right direction. And you'll also notice that the booster is still moving perfectly downwards under control. As the booster reaches the close range of the launching pad, you'll notice the grid fin stops moving because the grid fin helps the booster rotate perfectly towards its needed landing position. Therefore, the Starship Super Heavy is also equipped with said grid fins, allowing the Super Heavy to be able to achieve the same results as the Falcon 9. In a scenario where the Super Heavy doesn't land in the needed position, Mechazilla's chopstick arms and system already have an important system equipped to handle a certain amount of rotational issue. Thanks to SpaceX Recreation Eccentric, an amazing animation video illustration of how this will work was created. Immediately after the chopstick's arm catches the booster, a mechanical system equipped with Mechazilla arms will slowly guide the booster until it gets to the perfect position to be able to place it at the center of the orbital launch mount for consistent reusability. 
Without X, we can attest that SpaceX is on the verge of a massive achievement and admiration in the space industry, should their progress continue. SpaceX is the only launch provider in the universe with this secretly successful knowledge, with a record of 101 successful booster landings. As we know, it's unlikely that Mechazilla will be moving in any way. Its chopsticks will be doing its limited movement, as it's not a commonly known crazy and agile robotic tower. Although the launch tower is gigantic, separately, the chopsticks weigh as much as 100 tons each, even though the massive mechanism used to control the chopsticks weighs as much as 6,000 hours. What kind of landing tricks does SpaceX utilize? The SpaceX Falcon 9 would not require the drone ships for damping, because the booster is equipped with honeycomb crush blocks inside its leg. You observe the legs of the Falcon 9 booster after landing. You will notice a measurement of the lowest leg of the damper, because there's a honeycomb or net structure that dampens the landing every single time the Falcon 9 booster lands on a solid platform. However, the honeycomb or net-like structure is not reusable, so for each landing the booster makes, the crush locks are always changed. But as for Starships or Super Heavies, they are not equipped with such legs for landing. So, what is SpaceX's plan for the Starship landing? This is where the Mechazilla comes in as it will be used to dampen the Starship or Super Heavy's landing, rather than utilize honeycombs. The tower bars that work as the proposed landing surface for the booster catcher are not motionless, as they move up and down. Although it isn't much, the effectiveness can be compared to that of the honeycomb on the Falcon 9 booster, based on speculation. It isn't overwhelmingly significant at all, but this is very vital for SpaceX's Starship and Super Heavy's soft landing. The most recent test of Booster 4 entailed some SpaceX teams filling the liquid oxygen tank with LN2 before proceeding to fill the methane tank equally, creating a path to the beginning of the first static fire test on the orbital launch mount, OLM. However, it hasn't yet been confirmed that Booster 4 and the OLM tank have achieved their 100% launch readiness for any test. SpaceX has not given any positive clearance to store methane in their custom-built TSC tanks, as announced by regulations from the Texas Commission, which regulates natural gas storage in Texas. When will Mechazilla be fully and actively utilized? In November 2021, Musk hinted that it would not be fully active until January 2022, but now it seems clear that it will be until March before we can hope to see anything spectacular from Mechazilla. Although SpaceX will not be trying to catch its booster or Starship with Mechazilla anytime soon, we should expect to see Mechazilla utilized to stack Starships on the Super Heavy very soon. We hope to see more development and testing on Mechazilla within the time frame. Amazing, right? This simply means that Mechazilla is an important architectural plan for the successful landing and takeoff of a SpaceX Starship and is super heavy in order to achieve Musk's Mars ambitions, frequent conveying of humans and astronauts for interplanetary transport, payload delivery, and reusability. What's your take on the design and manufacturing of SpaceX Mechazilla? What kind of revolution do you propose the successful completion of Mechazilla will catalyze in the space industry? How soon do you predict SpaceX plans to launch its first interplanetary spacecraft? Drop your comments below and let us know your thoughts about this.